from awesome Cena action, Lost in Time, Captain America Shield, a deleted Batman parody, and up to nine alternate endings. There's a lot that Marvel deleted from the final version of Eternals. Yippee Kaye, movie lovers, I'm Jan, and in this video I'm revealing all the cutscenes and characters, alternate post-credit scenes, and deviant designs that ended up getting the chop. Spoilers ahead, of course, so take care. There was a great looking scene with Cena in the first trailer that didn't make it into the movie, which seems to be part of what Makari and Kingo's actors have described as a visually spectacular deleted scene set during the flashback to the Gupta Empire. The scene involved a lot of silk and would have established the two types of Eternals, the Thinkers, that's Cersei, Ajax, Fastos, Sprite and Droog, and the Fighters, that's Icarus, Gilgamesh, Thena, Makari and Kingo. It was intended to show how the family were both dysfunctional and fun at the same time, but was cut for pacing which, given the length of the movie, makes sense. What's especially intriguing about this deleted scene is that this guy here is carrying a shield very similar to Steve Rogers' famous Captain America shield. That's strange because chronologically in the main MCU timeline it was Howard Stark who first created Cap Shield in the 20th century, whereas the Gupta scenes in Eternals take place in 400 AD, many hundreds of years earlier. Steve Rogers did of course decide to go time travelling at the end of Avengers Endgame for his rendezvous with Peggy Carter and he also brought back a new Captain America shield for Sam Wilson. So did he also decide to go back further in time and have something to do with the shield we see in this scene? Alternatively and more likely, Fastos invented this shield and kept it in storage on the Eternal ship and released the idea for it later on in time to Howard Stark, similar to how he slowly introduces other technology over the years to humankind in this film. A line widely used in the Eternals trailers and TV spots but which didn't make it into the final movie is when Icarus says Eternals assemble to prove a good line. It's a nod of course to the comics and that awesome moment when Cap finally said the famous line in Endgame as he called for Earth's mightiest heroes to wade into battle against Thanos. Avengers! Assemble. Another deleted line from the trailers would have come at the end of the movie when Sprite is sitting with Icarus watching the volcano erupt as the emergence begins. This is what the end of the world looks like. At least we have front row seats. The character I really enjoyed in the film was Kingo and the comedic moments that both he and his human friend Karun brought to the story. The documentary they begin filming on Kingo's jet is hilarious and reminds me of the Thor mockumentaries. And in fact, there's an Avengers name drop in the trailers that was cut from the final movie. The Avengers are Thor, Spider-Man. Another deleted scene from Kingo's jet has Sprite holding a microphone and performing what looks like karaoke. The others behind her appear to be sleeping and given there's several cocktails on the bar, it looks like this is some kind of party scene on the jet. An area where I thought the movie did impress was its visual style, especially the deviants which had some particularly striking looks. The scene where their leader Crow uses his tentacles to transform the other deviants in the cave into monstrous winged and wolf-like creatures was especially shocking. However, there were some even more horrifying deviant designs that didn't make it into the film. Leaked concept art shows frog-like creatures and scorpion-style monsters that weren't in the final movie. The frog-like deviant might have been based on the Marvel character Bro the Toad, who in the comics was a ruler of the ancient Deviant Empire and also commanded the Deviant Warlord Crow. The name on the concept art for the Scorpion Deviant indicates the creature was based on a mythological Mesopotamian half-human, half-scorpion creature. I think this would have been an especially interesting Deviant for the Babylonian attack, given how these scorpion creatures appear in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Interestingly, the real-world myths of the Scorpion Men say they were created by the ocean goddess Tiamat, whose name is reminiscent of Tiamat, the celestial whose birth in the Indian Ocean is stopped by Circe. These other deviant designs, which appear to be by concept artist Tully Summers, seem to have inspired the look of some of the other versions of the deviants in the movie, such as the winged monster, the wolf-like beast, and the long-legged, almost spider-like creatures. Some of the humanoid designs also appear to be the inspiration for Crow's more human-like appearance that he acquires as the movie goes on. As well as deleted antagonists, there were also two Eternal characters cut from the final film. Director Chloe Zhao revealed that there were 12 Eternals in the original script, but that two of them had to be let go. And co-screenwriters Kaz and Ryan Fierpo elaborated on Deadline's podcast, saying that although Marvel initially asked for 12 characters after the first draft, they felt it was just too many brand new characters to introduce all at once to the MCU audience. One of those deleted characters was Vampiro, a somewhat 
obscure Eternal, who despite his name and fangs, isn't a vampire. In fact, he's more of a Batman knockoff in terms of his suit, look and use of high-tech gadgets. Given the numerous DC references already in the movie, That's Superman! With the cape and you're shooting laser beams out of your eye! A Batman-style character would certainly have fit in. However, it's just as well the number of Eternals was cut down, because even with 10, the film did feel somewhat overstuffed. And thinking back to Guardians of the Galaxy, for example, their team began with just five new characters. In true Marvel style, Eternals has a couple of post credit scenes, setting up new storylines in the MCU. However, screenwriter Kaz Fierpoz revealed that there were a total of nine post credit scenes originally considered for the film. In an interview with Metro, he explained that each of the possible versions of the ending told a different story with different characters and different ideas, and he added that some of them were really spicy. Given what we know about Marvel's upcoming movie slate, other possibilities for the end credit scenes could have been Doctor Strange 2 or Thor Love and Thunder. But what would you have liked to have seen? While discussing his stunt work and training, Droog actor Barry Keown revealed that his mind-controlling character had at least one fight scene cut from the film. In an interview with Comic Book Movie, he said that writer-director Chloe had written a boxing scene, and his character was avoiding punches and the tail and stuff like that, which sounds like he might have had a fight scene with either Icarus and also perhaps Crow or possibly another deviant, given he says that Droog was avoiding a tail. By the way, actor Keown is actually a bit of an amateur boxer in real life. Some other scenes cut from the final film include shots in the trailer of a longer opening scene, Cersei passing her hand over crops in Babylon, which has echoes of Thanos the farmer in Endgame tending to his crops, and Ajax saying Hell yes. during her reunion with Icarus at the house in South Dakota. And it wouldn't be a Marvel movie without some altered trailer scenes that ended up quite different in the final film. In the past, these have been done either to avoid giving away spoilers or just filmed exclusively for promotional purposes. So in the first Eternals trailer when Thena wields her sword at this moment her eyes are normal, whereas in the movie, this scene takes place while she has the Mad Weary, and so her eyes are actually white. When Cersei says it's beautiful to Icarus in the first trailer, it appears to happen as the Eternals are arriving on Earth, whereas in the movie, this moment happens just after the Eternals have been created, and the view outside the the window is very different, with Cersei and Icarus looking down on Earth from space. And when Icarus suggests he could lead the Avengers now that Iron Man and Steve Rogers aren't around, the trailer follows up with everyone bursting into laughter. So now that Captain Rogers and Iron Man are both gone, who do you think's gonna lead the Avengers? I could lead them. <laughs> In the movie, however, that reaction doesn't happen, and instead Kingo agrees with Icarus, whereas Gilgamesh simply points out that Ajax didn't even choose him to lead the Eternals. Another alternate trailer scene is a cool close-up of Makari speed-reading her way through a book, whereas in the final movie the shot is only seen from much further out, and it doesn't quite have the same effect. So do you wish any of these deleted scenes have been included in the film? And how do you rate Eternals compared to your favourite MCU movies? Comment with your thoughts below. And if you enjoyed this video, a thumbs up and a share are hugely appreciated. Next, you can tap left to learn how Black Widow's solo movie almost ended with her returning from the dead. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Yippee-ki-yay, movie lovers!